fastest way to become better at any game is with the help of a coach, and that's when ProGuides.com comes in. We want you to get those victory royales, those chicken dinners, those three stock victories. And to help you get there, we've created InstaPro. Want to know what it's like to learn from the best? Check out this session. And then check out the link in the description to hop on a session of your own. Hey guys, my name is Tony Chow. I've been playing League of Legends since Season 2. I'm currently a Challenger AD carry main who's played professionally. You can find me at ProGuys.com where I do all my coaching sessions and in this video, I do a queue with one of my students in Gold Elo and then do a VOD review after the game. Enjoy! Hey guys, my name's Craziness and I'm a coach for ProGuys' new feature called InstaPro. I've been playing League of Legends since Season 2. I'm currently Grandmaster. I'm a main AD carry, but I play every single role. I also own an esports team, and I've coached thousands of students. I hope you enjoy the video. Get right into it. So yeah, for this matchup, normally we would leash, right? We would just obviously leash and go to lane, and we'd get pushed in anyways. But in this case, since we're not leashing, we can actually get priority in this lane because we're Soraka Ezreal into even though it's Varus Morgana, but we know for sure Morgana started binding because she tried invading you, right? And she missed uh, the binding, so we know for sure she has that. Normally Morgana's go W, which means they have more poke potential, but in this case she has Q, so she just has kill pressure, but she doesn't have poke potential. As long as we're both dodging the Q, we should be fine. So level one right. happens. So in my opinion, level one, we should be pushing up here, and you should be autoing the wave down. So that we can get the push going. Because if we get the push going, and we hit level 2 first, right? Ezreal EQ threat is high enough for them to back off. And if they don't back off, I have my QE, right? I have two poking yeah. abilities. You have one You have one and a half poking abilities, right? Because your E kind of counts as one. So that's something that we want to look for uh, since we're not having to leash. The only thing that we have to worry about if we decide to do this, which was my bad, I'm supposed to ward right here, right? Because if Vi decides to, for some odd reason, do red, come bot, we can see it coming and potentially get away, right? Or if she okay. does red, Krugs, by then we'll be level 2, so we have more tools to escape the Vi, and we can still escape, right? This only works because we're not leashing, uh, so that we can do all these things. If we're leashing, it's just normal, right? We just walk the lane and get pushed in, that's fine, right? But yeah, okay. so this is something that we can take advantage of since we don't have to leash. So you try poking, that's but, fine. But um, if, if, if we show bot land that early, our jungler doesn't do blue and we would take it. Yeah, that's fine. It, it that's fine? Yeah, that's fine. The way priority works, right, is if we're not leashing, that means top lane is leashing, right? So yeah. that means top lane is going to lose priority, right? So he's going to get pushed in by Aatrox. So we, in bot lane, need to push bot lane so we have priority for Kane at 3 minutes and 15 seconds to come down here and contest Scuttle Crab. Kane okay. needs at least one lane to play through. And that is not top because he gets a leash from top, right? That's like a high level competitive thing, but that's just what I've been, what I'm used to, right? In my competitive games, my jungler gets no leash from any lane. He says, everyone go to lane and start pushing everyone, right? So everyone can pressure at once. So he can invade the enemy jungler because he has priority in every lane. And then once we figure out where the jungler is, then that side plays safe. For example, if we know Vi's bot side, we would play safe after the first, second, and third wave. So we'd start getting pushed in by the third wave. But that's just competitive gaming. This is a solo queue, but we still want to do this to some effect, right? So oh. if we're not leashing, we want to try to get priority to push out the Varus or Morgana early. So we're level 2, but we still can't really walk up, right? Because they have the yeah. bigger minion wave. So we just, again, want to chill, just keep farming, and if they walk up, maybe throw a queue at them and then run away. Let the wave come in and just farm it under the tower. Once the wave bounces back, then we can play aggressive, but not right now. Right now, we're just farming. Okay, so I told you right here, right? That Morgana's gonna walk up in Q, you didn't see it coming. So uh, that, that's just something to watch out for. So I preemptively heal you before he gets the ignite off so that I get the maximum value out of the heal. Okay, round number two, same thing, dude. If we don't have vision of that bush, but we know for sure the wave's coming into us, right? We need to just play back, give up minions, even EXP if we have to, to make sure we don't get hit by the binding. Because once the wave comes in, we can fully farm it and we won't be super far behind, right? So right here, getting hit by the binding is very bad because now we lose your TP and on top of that, you don't even have tier yet. So next time, when we know the wave's pushing towards us, right, for sure, we yeah. just need to stand farther back, like all the way up here, give up the minion EXP, the gold, let it push in, 
and then we can farm and catch up a little bit. That's just the nature of a losing matchup. And obviously Kane gang top, so we have no pressure bot side at all. That's how we have to play this matchup. It's unfortunate, but that's the Ezreal CP life. You get pushed in and you just try to farm up until tier. Yeah, and then once the second binding goes through, it's uh... Yeah, right here, if you didn't die, we'd be catching this wave. You would get more farm. So you catch this next wave too, and you would be able to potentially get closer to your tier. You might not get your tier, but you'll get closer for sure. So yeah, right here, I'm just walking up solo so that I can stop the reset as much as possible. Okay, so right here, we want a hard shove because you just use TP off of your death. So we want to get your tier, right? So we need to hard shove this wave and make sure that we can reset without losing any minions in the next wave that's spawning right now while getting your tier. Um, Tony? What's up? I, I, I have a question. What's up? Like, can you um, go back to the moment that I hit by Morgana, the second Q? So it's the first you, said, you, said, you said the wave is pushing toward us, right? Yep. What if our wave is pushing toward them? Morgana is also sitting on that push. Okay. What should I do? So if that happens, I, I almost never see that happen at this stage of the game. That's probably impossible in my opinion. But if that does happen, oh. we have the bigger venue wave then, right? That means we can walk up. Because if Morgana is fighting us in this bush and we have a big minion wave right here, the minion wave will hit her and we'll win the trade because we have the bigger minion wave, right? Okay. Yeah, there you go. Okay, I learned nothing. So it's sure. like offense and defense. You have the minion wave, you're playing offense. Right now, this is their offense and we're on defense. Once we have oh. the bigger, min bigger minion wave, we are playing on offense and they are playing on defense. If they walk up, we poke them, right? Okay, so right here, we, we still want to shove the menu wave. We don't want to touch the tower at all. We just want to push. Make sure you get your Tears of Goddess, and then reset again. So push, push, push. Beautiful. I see you missing those minions, uh, Noak. Keep telling you over and over again, guy. Can't miss those minions. Oh, uh, I just get panicked. Sorry. <laughs> no problem, no problem. Oh, they're hitting me. Uh, I also need to take the CS. I was like... Yeah. <laughs> That's why it comes down to balancing between uh, make sure, making sure you get the CS and dodging at the same time. You have to allocate your energy into both. Mm -hmm. That's what uh, all the professional players do. They understand when to harass, how to harass, when, where to stand when they're CSing so that they can maximize uh, their gains during the lane phase. Do you guys have a standard like at which minutes, like how much CS you should got? Yep. Generally, you should be reaching... Everyone says 10 CS per minute, but that is pretty unrealistic in my opinion. If the game is going normal where there's offense and defense and both sides are playing properly, you should be getting around 8 to 9 minions uh, per minute for the first 10 minutes at least. 8 to 9. Yep, so right here we're just playing safe. We are on defense because they have the bigger minion wave. So just let it push in, farm the wave, don't fall too far behind. I see you're missing a C uh, some more CS. <laughs> no problem though. I know it's painful yeah, it's because you're AD main. Yeah, no problem. I understand too, when you have just a tier on Ezreal and you're, and you're under the tower, and I just queued the wave of Soraka, it makes everything very hard. Understandable, but uh, when there's free CS during the laning phase earlier, like over here, there were, no one was contesting oh. you, I expect you to land those CS at least. All right, let's get out of the laning phase. Uh, do you have any questions for this laning phase though? How do you farm under the tower? Hmm, that one's a hard question to answer because you're basically just asking me how to farm. But it comes down to understanding which minions the tower will prioritize first. So the closer one, right? Eh? Yeah, the closer one. So you want to look at all the. So let's find a, a time where all the minions are coming in. So right here, you need to focus on uh, that melee minion first. And so right now, the cannon minion is going to be focused. But the cannon minion has has a lot of HP, right? So right now, you know this minion wave is coming, right? So this minion wave right here is going to hit this melee minion right here. And you know this cannon minion will live a while. So what you need to focus on doing right now is obviously the first thing is to dodge these guys' abilities, right? That's step number one. Step number two, setting up the minion wave. You need to be focusing down this minion with your auto and Q. Kill this one. You want to look to try to kill this, 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 if possible, before the tower starts focusing them. And you have a lot of time because the cannon is full HP, right? First priority, this melee minion. Second priority, these, 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 like these casters. And then when the cannon gets low, that's number one priority, right? When the cannon gets a bit lower. So th that's the things that you want to be thinking about when a wave comes into you, is which ones do I need to get or the tower is just going to one-shot them, right? Because these mage minions back here, they're going to get one tower shot, then you can kill them with a Q, right? You need to focus the ones that you know for sure are not going to live. And this melee minion will not live because this minion wave is coming to attack it. And these mage minions are one shot, right, by the tower. So you want to get rid of them if you can. And then the cannon is just up to you on how well you... uh time your auto attack and Q with the cannon while doing everything I just said dodging and focusing on these minions right here all right uh, I'm gonna get out of the laning phase let's talk about maybe like later game and basic uh, macro decisions okay so right here we see Xerath right 
you just knew. I, I didn't notice that. Sorry. Okay, but the Zerith. <laughs> okay, let's say let's say Zerith's not there, right? Let's say Zerith's the mid lane, right, right here. Yeah. Same thing. You you just used your E to dodge like Morgana abilities. You have to back up very far. You cannot walk up at here at all. You cannot walk up. You have to back off to here. And on top of that, I personally think you have no reason to walk up here against the Varus except to land Qs, which isn't even that worth it because I'm not in lane to help you, right, if something happens. So you, after killing that minion right here, need to back off and stand right here. Just stand here. Let Varus push in the wave. Once the wave comes in, I'll be here to assist you. At least we can 2v3, right? Better than 1v3. So walking up here is very bad, especially since your E is down and you're against the Varus. So you end up getting Varus salted. You kind of just get blown up from here. Double down when your support is not in the lane. You need to double down on backing off and just sitting far back. That is one of my problems too when I'm playing competitive. My support's roaming. I walk up and I die, right? I need to control myself. I need to say, okay, my support's gone. I'm going to stand at the tower. Once my support is back, then I can farm again. If my support doesn't come back by the time it crashes, then as Ezreal, you need to stand over here to try to farm. Then when they start pushing up and your support still isn't back, you need to back off and just give up the minions, right? So things like that do happen, but you just need to adapt to whatever the situation you're given. And in this case, I'm not there, so back off. Let's continue. Mm. All right, so right now we're just farming. That's fine. We're taking Harold topside. You're in, a, you're in a pure 1v1, so if you're confident in taking a 1v1, which you should not be because it's Varus is very strong, you can obviously try to contest them. Otherwise, just try to Q farm at max range. Thank god we got the Herald. I flashed out. Alright, let's get into team fighting. Yeah, so really your goal right here is just to try to stand far back and just try to output as much DPS as you can. That was really good. Your positioning is really good. You understand that your Ezreal that's behind, you can't really auto attack, so you're just Q poking, throwing out your W's, and maybe E-ing for damage. That's pretty good. Let's get to the team fights. Like in this bush, like how 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 is Verse know I'm here? He doesn't have any vision of me, of me, right? <laughs> oh, okay. What? Does that make sense? What just happened? So this is this is Varus's vision right now on you. So you cleared the ward, and you're resetting where you just cleared the ward, but they have a little bit of vision left on you as the ward's dying. So this is this is his vision right now, even though he has no vision of the bush. So he goes for a blind ult, but he misses, unfortunately. So you understand now? Okay. So after you kill that minion, walk over here, or E over the wall or something, and then reset. Okay, there's one really good team fight that I want to go through, and that should be it for this game. Yeah, but in most cases, uh, your positioning always seems okay. You're outputting as much damage as you can for being behind on Ezreal, which is pretty good. You're just trying to Q, W, not auto attack too much because you don't have the damage output. Or being ahead, basically. You're not uh, really far ahead, so you're just uh, outputting what you can in a safe uh, distance. Good thing you didn't E over there. If I, th if I saw you E over there, you'd been dead to the bears. Okay, so you, yeah, you need to focus on this Zerath if you can. Yeah, this is really good. I love how you went down here to start dodging abilities. Based on all the games I've seen you play, your positioning is usually pretty good. I'd probably give you like an 8 out of 10 for everything. The two being that you uh, you want to peel back towards your teammates, in my opinion. So, so right here, you're going forward, which is fine for now. But when you're trying to when you're trying to escape, it's right here. Yeah, 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 yeah. You want to move with the zigs, in my opinion. So you know zigs is probably going to go this way, right? You want to stay with the zigs and stay together. Instead, you E away. You E to the cane, which is okay. But I would stay with the damage carries because, look, you have your whole squad right here. If you E, like, up here, you could be playing over here, and I can heal you from over the wall at least, right? We'd be a four-man unit over here, while Kane can do his solo stuff over here. So we're regrouping and then moving forward as a team together again in the middle of a team fight, which is exactly what you should be doing. So that's the only improvement I see that you could be doing here, is Eing this way and playing near your TK, your Ziggs, and your Soraka instead of just playing with just the cane. So that's the only thing I would change there. But otherwise, well played. And the game is pretty much over from here. Uh, do you have any questions? No. I say it was I just the laning phase. I think I get carry by Tom Tom Kench. <laughs> kind of. I would say, again, reiterating it, your laning phase is very important. You need to stop dying. That's uh, step number one, in my opinion. Understand when you should be respecting your opponent. If I'm not there, stand very far back. Make sure you land your CS, and if we didn't have those deaths where you got hit by the Morgue Bindings, that yes. 
and you walking up to a Varus, the game would have been much more smoother and it would have been easier for TK to carry. Because we play top side this game, right? That means we are the weak side. We need to play defensive and just try to farm and keep up as much as we can, which we kind of did, minus the deaths. So if we drop the deaths, get a bit more CS during the laning phase, we should you you should be good. Because your team fighting is pretty good, in my opinion. You really need to dodge those bindings and then like I said I think the most important thing apart from dodging the binding was just being in your turret because if you're in your turret you actually throw auto attacks faster right so basic attacks yeah. deal 110 damage to the target and nearby enemies gaining 75 range that's the rockets that you're using and the pow pow minigun basic attacks grant bonus attack speed for 2.5 seconds so you would have had bonus attack speed for 2.5 seconds and then it stacks the entire time so you get 30 percent so when they're in your range close enough to do that just swap it all right i was i had no idea this was even happening either so yeah. so this is another thing that uh since we're on the subject you just said you had no idea this is happening so pay attention to the minimap so let's say we're looking at you right here right in the minimap you're gonna see that he's gonna ping you he's asking for help and also in the minimap if you pause it we're actually looking at the vision here of the red side only so this is what you guys see you can actually see the Camille perfectly on the minimap and then he starts pinging in this case like what you would want to do is try to help him you can't do too much because you're pretty low but as soon as you've seen this Camille start tanking the tower and flash under maybe it was like a possible kill if you would have just auto attacked her there okay I got really freaked out when the morgue walked up to me though I know that the only thing she wanted to do and the only thing she could do was go for the kill but I mean if, I think if we look over that again I don't know it's like a tear because I want to go down yeah, so, to so, dodge the bind but if I go down, I walk into Sever. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so, kind of a lose -lose. so it's kind of like in this situation where you kind of could have done, like maybe position yourself a little bit better. So you see her advancing, right? So you kind of want to just stay a little bit farther back or over here. Like I would have kind of ran over here instead of being so close to her. I mean, like I said, you had two options. Just use the turret and hit. And actually, you could have dodged this way behind the Mord. I know you were walking towards Sever, but you only want to walk towards Sever to dodge that. And as soon as you go back on your feet, you just maybe go in the bush so that they don't have vision of you or just back up a little bit and you just keep kiting. Because you ended up getting hit by Sever the entire time anyways and you got hit by the the binding right so it's like it was just better to dodge it and then go back to you know a better position so check this out so you're already really low on mana right so be careful using your w because your w actually takes a lot of mana it takes 50 and at the beginning 50 is a lot but you don't want to use your uh your abilities that to just farm like you can do it maybe if it's the cannon minion i feel like right there as soon as the mord i grabbed the morg i felt like you could have thrown your traps you thrown the traps a little late right there so if you time it really well like with your you you know the CC about any so this is just like a general idea for whatever support you have if they have a CC you can chain CC with your traps if you're quick enough right here like as soon as you see this guy grab her now you can throw your traps right now like right here throw your traps now and then you get her right and but you kind of threw it kind of late so you want to throw the traps while the CC is in motion in, in this case the Mordekaiser was pulling her towards you guys and so since you know she's gonna get pulled towards like you just throw the traps down and then after the CC was over you kind of threw the traps already and then she was able to escape and then that led into just dying. I felt like if maybe you trapped her on time, you guys probably would have killed her. But then Camille was still ganking, so I don't know if like you guys would have survived. But I think maybe you guys would have been able to get a 1 for 2 or maybe even a 2 for 2 because the silver was pretty low. So I think if you were able to focus her and kill her, you would have had your passive and then it would have been all good. And what items did we buy here? We bought just a pink ward i don't think i had much yeah okay didn't even have enough for pickaxe i was thinking of resetting when i was low on mana before the camille came but i'm like i don't actually have anything to reset for yeah it's fine so usually if i do have very little gold i'll buy at least one item which will be like the dagger for my boots you know the attack speed i think it's mm -hmm. better than buying nothing hopefully we can farm up and get a, an item but i think the dagger definitely would have helped for at least having a little bit of extra attack speed and you guys got to remember that after that Mord uses his uh, CC, his move to, you know, try to see somebody, you guys are really vulnerable after he uses that, you know, to for anything. So it's like right when he used it, he got binded by the Morg and like he has nothing else to defend himself. So he's pretty much he has to take all the damage. You got to really be careful with that because also not just him, but it, when you throw your traps, you're actually really vulnerable too because your traps, you can actually use them when they gank, throw them on your feet or something and then run away. And if you use your traps like you did just now and not hit anybody, then when you get ganked or start another fight, like you might need them. So it's Try to use these traps when you can secure a kill or when you can use it defensively to run away from a gank. So Ergot's mid lane. Looks like he's going to gank right here. It's awarded. They're all pinging him. Like the Morgano is out of position. You guys should be able to maybe try to do something on her. 
So I think you could have used your W a little sooner there. Did you have your W right here? Hold on. No, it was on cooldown. Never mind. Never mind. You're good. Maybe right here you could have used it because now it's not on cooldown. So hitting the W here, and I think the Orga could have activated his ulti if you would have hit it maybe a little sooner. And then Sivir ended up blocking that. Oh, nice, dude. You dodged everything there. So that's pretty good. I really like the footwork that you have because some AD carries, when they flash, they just walk in a straight line. And you know that she has a skill shot, so it's like you dodge the Q and then you use your heal. And this is really good that you dodge this Q. It's because, like, you sidestep right here. It's not like you kept walking that way. You just turned around. So see how it's good to, to go towards the enemy sometimes? Right when you dodge it, just keep going in your way. That's kind of like what I was trying to tell you earlier when you said it was a bad idea to go towards the ward. But it's just doing that, like, you know, sidestep and then keep running. So that was really good. Good job. And I would back at this point. Like, I think if you stay, you're overstaying here. And if you're backing there, that's not the best back spot to do it in. So let's see what happens here. If I can uh, take a wild guess, I think you actually end up dying here before you go back. Mm, or no. I get my support. I'm pretty sure I get my support killed. So I get greedy. Yeah, I get my support killed. Yeah. So when you were backing earlier, you could have just backed. Like, a little, you know, like standing back here and then back. Your little recall. When you're that low, you just got to recall. There's not really any other choice. So, like, you ended up staying, you know, wasting a little bit of time staying. And you got your support killed, and you had enough to get a BF sword a while ago. So it's like you could have backed, you know, pretty safe a little bit sooner. So now I'm gonna get a BF sword in the dagger. So this is what we're watching here. We're seeing that the Camille's getting chased by Mord, and Mord actually ults her. So right here, like, so if he ulted her, you need to really be careful for your positioning because that means remember he's invisible, and you're like out in the open right now, and she kind of just jumped up in there and dodged your stuff. Right now, you kind of just put yourself in a bad position there. And but at least you got your kill, man. I mean, I think I was really lucky. Oh my goodness, nice, dude. That was really beast. <laughs> so that wasn't luck. Like, you were planning that second one. But I feel like the, the luck that you did have was surviving that. Because, like, as a Jinx, being in the middle of all that, it's, like, really dangerous, right? You almost got cut out. So what you want to do now is to kind of, like, focus on farming a little bit. Because you're really behind, right? So... Pay attention to the, your CSing a little bit. When you're behind, you gotta just try to get whatever you can. And if you're even, like you just gotta try to find that advantage and get a little bit more than the enemy AD carry. Because, like I said, I feel I feel like your CSing is pretty low right now. Like we're 10 minutes in the game. Something that would be decent would be like around 80, 85 right now. And I know nobody in the game has that. But you know, we're not really comparing ourselves with the guys in the game. We're just trying to know where we can be at. So you tend to overstay then, I think. Cause like, right, we just got a double kill. And I feel like you could have, uh, you know, went to go buy and get an advantage. Jeez, you're actually pretty really, you're hitting really hard, so imagine like when you do go by. Let's see what happened here. Constantly move around while you're farming, kind of like what you're doing right now, but look, like you're walking in a straight line right here. You want to wait for your minions to come as well, because like you see your minions are way back here. You have no minions yet. If your minions are not in the lane, you're just going to be vulnerable to whatever they want to throw at you. Get the right there instead of just going in super like, you know, aggressive. Maybe just stay over here on your side of the lane and wait for your wave to arrive. I know I say focus on CS, but you always have to look at the minimap while you're CSing. Kind of like try to get a habit into looking at the minimap like every 10 seconds or something. Just mm -hmm. farm it up and then look at the minimap. Farm it up, look at the minimap. Oh. So right there, you kind of could have kited her a little bit better in my opinion. I felt like you were just like walking towards her and when you kite you gotta walk away from her. So like what you wanna do is kite this way towards your traps. So you threw the traps down, right? You wanna one against Camille, you wanna stay away the, from the walls because if she jumps this way, then she'll be able to stun you. So what you could have done was maybe walk towards this wall only because your traps were there, right? So if she tries to stun you, she'll okay. jump on the traps. Use your traps more to your advantage there because you could have kited her towards your traps. I feel like if you would have walked towards like here in this area, it would have went a little bit better for you because your traps were in that area. Like I said, I only say that because you threw your traps that way. So use your traps. If you run this way and she chases you, she will eat your trap. But instead, you just stood still, right? Like I said, I feel like right now we've been standing still a lot of these last fights. When the Morgana was like here, you know, you went straight in on a straight line and then you were standing still there with the Camille. I just think we have to pay attention to our positioning a little bit. Oh, nice, man. So let me see that. That was a nice one. So, so I mean, you do have map, uh, some type of map awareness, right? Because if you're able to see over here that there's somebody low and then you throw the ulti and you get it, and that means it's because you look at the map, you know what I mean? So it's like, uh, I don't think you're going to have that much trouble if you're already able to snipe people across the map, right? Boom. Nice job. If you're able to already look and snipe people, you're going to be able to do that. Like, you know, look at the map to see if someone's ganking you. Look at the map if you have vision and stuff like that. But, like, once again, didn't wait for the minions and you got hit by the Q, right? Look, now what happens is Camille arrives and 
we had no vision over here in the enemy jungle. We wanted to make like a flash play here in mid, and it's just like, I don't know if it was the best decision to do that, you know? Once again, wait for the minions to come to the lane. So you want to just push this out, or farm this, and then stay here. Wait for the minions. Once the minions pass you, like right here, you can start like, you know, walking up with them. But you never like in front of them, man, because it's just like too dangerous. Put yourself out there too much. Like, like I said, like, boom, there's a Morgana in front of you. She hits you with the Q. She took off almost like a, a little bit more than a third of your health, almost half, just off of the Q and W. And then you took a tower hit that was not necessary, and here comes the Camille just to hold you. Remember, the Camille's ulti is pretty OP. You can't get away from it, even if you have flash. You always got to keep that threat in the back of your mind as an AD carry that there's a Camille on the other side, and you got to give her a little bit more respect because that kind of stuff will happen. So like, like again, bad positioning, not respecting the Camille and going in right there is just like, uh, it's been their, your death wish like the last two times you died so far and you got it, right? Be careful what you wish for, no, I'm just joking. <laughs> just be careful with your positioning, man. Like be too far pushed up as the AD carry. Remember your job as an AD carry is to stay alive and to be in the back doing damage. And like none of your guys are in front of you. Like the Mordekaiser is behind you. Urgot is, uh, I, would, I wouldn't say he's your front line, but he's a little bit more tankier than you so you kind of just got to work around these two guys and stay alive but if you're in front of them there's not really much you can do so here we go again like uh, we're pushing up still don't have any minions you're not respecting the Morgana that she can cue you you get uh, ulted this time and then the Camille comes again third time out of nowhere so it's like you gotta respect the Camille if you don't know where she's at you gotta always pay attention to that Especially since you're Jinx, you're not like a Tristana who can jump back, you're not an Ezreal who can jump back, or a Lucian who can jump back. You're a Jinx who just has her traps, and if you don't have your traps available, then you're really vulnerable, you know? So remember when you're at the, the Yasuo throws as well, you cannot throw auto attacks in it. So just don't even waste your time auto attacking here. You gotta pass the wall, you know, with, the, with your champion, walk past this wall, like pretty much right click here. And once you see Jinx out of that wall, then start hitting, because like you're throwing all this, so you're gonna even throw another one, I think, like, and they got blocked again. So none of your auto attacks hit. So just make sure you're past that wall. I know with that skin, maybe it's kind of hard to see the wall, right? Like the skin that Yasuo is using. But there's definitely a Yasuo wall there and nothing can go through that. That's like a projectile. So just pay attention to that. Like you threw like three auto attacks. This is your fourth auto attack and nothing. So keep that in mind, right? So right here, I think your better position could have been inside of the pit with your team, because your team was all inside of it, right? What's your job again as an AD carry? To stay behind your team and do damage. So right here, you can go inside the pit with them and just stand here and hit it, because you'll be behind all of them, you know what I mean? But instead you stand here and look what the enemy team is doing right now. So we're gonna see this vision right here. Look what Camille finds here, by accident as well. It's not like she even planned it. She's like, oh look, there's a Jinx here, what's up? And then you're dead, you know what I mean? So it's like, just keep in mind that their base is right here you know their blue buffs over here and this is like where usually junglers come out to come into the river if it's not warded then you got to position yourself a little bit better than that remember you want to use those traps to your advantage man so it's like what we have to try to do with the traps like i told you at the beginning it's like you either want to pick somebody off with the traps or you want to use it defensively right and in this case we could use it defensively but how could we have done it better was maybe throwing the traps right here on the ground and then walking this way Oh, she jumped over your traps, actually. That was really bad luck. I, I mean, I guess you did You did what I asked. Like, you said next to your traps, but she j jumped over it, man. That was just unlucky. She ended up stepping on your traps anyways, but, like, dude, how unlucky are you that she jumped over it <laughs> with her ult? I want to see what's happening here. So here, your team fought without you. It's not its not your fault, like I said. Your teammates need to realize that, you know, the AD carry is here. And by the way, this is really bad. So they already have, a, right, they took this inhib down. So you guys are, uh, are farming the super minions way out in the middle of nowhere, right? If you're defending the super minions this far out, most likely the other team will engage on you if they get, like, you know, a pickup like they did on the Kha'Zix right there. And that's just no good. Because, like, what did you guys win out of that? You guys got the little wave, the wave and the super minion. But then in cost of what? You just lost the Rumble, you just lost the Kha'Zix, now your Urgot's gonna die. You're forced to fight, and I think other things you could have done right here was you're hitting again targets that were right in front of you. So instead of using the rockets, use the this turret, the minigun, right? So like the minigun on this uh, Camille the entire time, minigun, 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 minigun. It's like, bah, 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 but you throw rockets, and when the rockets are a little slower, remember they do AOE damage, and I just think the, the, the minigun right there could have killed the, the Camille. Right there, when they're all low, and 
when they have no life, that's when you can use the rockets, you know? I felt like the turret was a lot better in that situation. It looks like the game's over. So if we can go through like a quick summary of this game. Pay attention to positioning, CSing a little bit better. I used to make custom games. I just go in a custom game and farm mm -hmm. 10 minutes. I would head to bot lane and farm for 10 minutes and see how much I, minions I can get. And also when I farm for 10 minutes, I don't buy. I don't buy the Doran's Blade. I just go in there without any items, without any pots, without any boots, nothing. Because yeah. it makes it a little bit harder to farm. And then once you get used to farming like that without items, when you jump in a rain game or a normal, you know, and you have an item, it's so much easier to farm. Learn when to use your Q as well. Because like sometimes I felt like you were using the rockets certain points where it wasn't really necessary. I gave you a couple examples, right? To where you could have used the minigun and to where you could use the rockets. Just how you do it with the kills. Like whenever you see somebody low, you just boom, you throw your ulti without like, you know, hesitating and you get the kill. I saw you get a bunch of snipes this game. So that's really good. I think like a big part of getting kills with Jinx is her ultimate. Sometimes you can have a really bad laning phase and then you see somebody in top lane farming and without health and boom, you get a kill and they kind of get you back into the game. You do that really well. I've seen you get a lot of nice snipes this game. Some people, when they get the passive, they go straight into a fight and then they die, but like you were using it really smart, right? If you're able to do that already when you get the passive and like position yourself well, just try to do it a little bit better without the passive because, you know, positioning is like really key. Keep in mind, don't be too hard on yourself because you did not have a support that could, like I said, give you heals, give you shields, or protect you. You know, you didn't have any peel. You had a, a Mordekaiser who ult somebody and disappears, and it's like, hey, where's my support during the team fight? Oh, he's in the shadow realm with the, the guy he ulted, man. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't the best support that you could have had this game, but I think you did pretty good with having him uh, down there with you, and like I said, if you just work on the things that I was mentioning, you'll prove a lot, and um, and yeah, man, I don't know if you have any more questions or, or anything, but for me, that, that that's the session, and so yeah, that's it, man. So good luck with your next games. Like I so I think you can definitely improve and uh, good luck man uh, thanks again for using uh, pro yep. guides and if you have enough points for another session in the future I'll be more than happy to do another session with you